So finally, we have heat, and I'm going to complain that I have to take my shoe off. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my very small place on the internet where I talk about my knitting, my knitting, my knitting life and different projects I have. My name is Isabelle, I am in France in Normandy in a sunny and warm Normandy and today it's going to be a video about my Yarn No Buy Year project you know I've already bought yarn for this month, not all for myself. When I was at Knitting Public Day a couple of weeks ago in Genet, in Cotentin, in Manche area. So I'm going to talk about what I've bought and how much I spent for myself at the time. I've made the calculations for the whole year with the yarn I got for, for some other people too. I have already looked at my want to make bundle for this year, for 2024, the patterns I want to buy that I place there. And then from time to time, I revisit this list to see if I still want to buy them or not. I removed three or four patterns from there that I had added since last time I talked about it, it was last month, at the end of last month. I did not quite recall why these patterns were there. So I removed them and I still have three or four that I, I have added since then and I want to keep. So I will be talking about that and I think it's going to be it for today. It is very late. I've been at work for the whole day. And let me tell you, fortunately, we are not in Odorama. My only desire is to jump into the shower. But if I go into the shower right now, I will wash my hair. I will have to do my makeup all again and dress up again and everything if I want to record. And if I don't record today, we are on a Wednesday. If I don't record today... I won't have enough time tomorrow to record and edit to post on Friday. So that, there you have it. I need to go to the shower. Okay, first, what am I wearing? I am wearing my painting shawl, one of Stephen West, how is it called? Painting triangles. Painting triangles shawl that I need in 2022. I recall exactly it was between the end of July and the beginning of August. It's a lot of knitting and I did knit and knit and knit. I was at my mother's and I was a bit bored. So I did knit and knit and knit and knit on that one and I knit it in like something like three weeks or something like that yes three weeks and it's, it's a lot of knitting it's a very big shawl so I used that cotton king yarn that I really don't like because it is extremely splitty even though I've been using wooden needles so that it reduces the chances that the cotton gets cut up and you split it with a very pointy metal needle Still, still, it was very splitty, unpleasant to knit with. And I already knew that because I had made a butterfly papillon shawl with the same cotton for my beloved sister-in-law. It was such a pain to be knitting with that cotton. So I should do the papillon or butterfly shawl once again with a better yarn. But anyway, there you have it. And this painting triangle shawl is really funny to make especially with a self-changing yarn so I did manage my yarn I unraveled all the cotton ball I did 
make different balls for the same color. I cut it and made different balls for the same color so that maybe you should see it that way. So that when I am going from one motif to the other, I change the color. So I went from dark to light and then back. So I did not go from light or white to the darker one. I just went the other way around. So from light to dark, which one is, is that one? Then I went to light again. So each time you increase, so you have more and more. So here, the, here is the white again. And in a way I finished with not the darkest one. The darkest one I think is in the border. The next before the darkest one and I was running out. So I kind of, I still have some leftovers of some certain colors. I kind of managed to make the border, have enough to make the border and not run out of any of the other colors. And I'm wearing that with my one of my non-perfect linen linen dress. This one, this blue one, I bought hmm, maybe two or three years ago. I do not recall. And I'm not sure I'm going to be wearing the shawl all throughout the video. But anyway, I I was wearing it this morning. I prefer to wear a cotton shawl rather than a wool shawl. It's a bit less warm, a bit less heavy and warm. I was wearing it this, this, this morning when I left for work and very quickly it went back to my backpack once I was at work because it was really getting too hot and I was in a, in a room that is not very well insulated and it was in plain sun and we were very warm. So Anyway, my painting triangle shawl by Stephen West from the painting, painting shawl book. I wear it during the summertime. I love this blue. I think the blue fits my linen dress. I have either cat hair. I'm sorry, I, have to, I will have to stop and find it. It's in my mouth. So I love this blue with my blue dress. I have one that is kind of an oatmeal color, that's the same. I love it with that one too. So basically that one of the shawls I wear in the morning during the summertime, if it's too, it's gonna be too warm to wear a coat, but I still want something in the morning because it's a bit chilly. So, okay, my June 2024 checking for my Yarn No Buy, no buy Year project. I will link down below the videos and where I have talked about this project, the, the different playlists I have for the different years I have undergone this project. And I will also link down below the video where I have my settings and regulations for this year. To make it short, I don't allow myself to buy patterns unless I'm ready to cast them on. One good example was last month I bought the pattern, the gallant pattern by Kadri just before I cast it on and I'm still knitting on it. For disclosure, I finished the body and I have to, I have to go and, and start on the sleeves now. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I buy the patterns only when I'm ready to cast on. But one thing is that I was buying patterns before that so that I don't forget them somewhere. I, ha I had them in my own library. I had them in my queue and so that I don't I don't forget about them and they don't get lost because I love them and etc. Thing is, I did buy too much, too many patterns that I still have to knit. So I'm knitting on my Yara, that's one of them. But other than that, I have many of them that I have bought and I have not knit yet. So to fulfill that desire, not to lose them, not to lose track of them, I have special bundles for each year of patterns I want to buy. 
And from time to time, I go through that list and I weed out the ones that I'm not sure why I placed there, them there in the first place. And two, that I'm not really sure I want to be making them right now, today. So we'll go through that too. And um, most of them, so I think I have three or four of them that are free and one of them that is paid for. So you have to be warned if you don't want to be triggered by me talking a, pa a pattern I want to be making that is not a free one. Maybe you should just skip that. Okay, and, and once again, another disclaimer. If you are not comfortable with me talking about how much I have spent, because what I spend, I can afford to be spending. Maybe you can't, and it's going to be outrageous for you, and it will go make you sad or something. So just watch another video. I'm going to be talking about how much money I spent, and it's not to be bragging about that. Each one have their own level of spending. I spend what I can afford to spend without impairing any of my other, the other parts of my life and without me choosing between yarn and my kids, never, never. So I spend money that I can spend, that's for one. And if I'm talking about that, it's because it's to make myself, oh, I thought I had the hair. It's to make myself accountable because I have this tendency to accumulate and I have, I still haven't, I'm not clear why. I still am processing all of that and it's very easy for me to put it under the rug, <laughs> talking about yarn. It's very easy for me to put it away from my own consciousness and I buy and I buy and I buy, even though I don't make myself in danger or anything. And then I forget, I start afresh each time. And this project is a way to make myself accountable of what I am doing, how I can control my frenzy to be buying and accumulating because I accumulate too much yarn and other things also, but yarn is one thing. And even if some people say that buying yarn and knitting yarn are two different hobbies and they feel very comfortable living in a yarn store, I don't. I don't feel comfortable with the amount of yarn I have. And the two years of this project, what has, what ha, have I learned during the two years of this project? Yarn comes to me. Yarn is a sneaky beast and it comes to me, it finds its way to me and I'm very happy about that. But it's, it finds its way to me and for me to be able to get to my own stash and knit from my stash, because I have beautiful yarn, I have to control how yarn comes to me and, and allow myself to be knitting from my own stash because I have very beautiful yarn I want to be using. That said, this month I went to Genève for the Knitting in Public Day and Len sous les pommiers, the ladies from Len sous les pommiers were there and they had a little booth, a little, a little booth. And there were maybe 10 or 15 different people and we spent the afternoon knitting and talking and everything and I bought yarn there. I had decided to go there to buy yarn, but not for myself because I already have four balls of this beautiful taupe colorway that they call taupe. I will show you one cone in taupe. And it's a bit between a light milk chocolate with a bit of pink into it. I, I really love this color very much. And as I was thinking, I'm buying only three sweaters quantity this year. I was thinking I have four balls. These were the last four ones they had the previous time I had seen them in Caen, there was a little fair there. This is where I met the lady. And I was thinking, so I will buy yarn for other people because you have sent me some yarn and 
I want some of you to experiment with this yarn and don't feel bad if it's not you, it's just because we've been exchanging yarn, we've been talking about all of that and I was thinking about these specific persons and I was thinking, yeah, I, I think they will, would enjoy that because the Avranchin wool, it's pure Avranchin wool, so it's a sheep breed from Cotentin, it's very soft. soft. So I went there to knit in public and to go to her booth. I knew she was having a booth there. What I was not knowing is that, so they have three main colorways, the natural one, the top one, it's a medium brown with some kind of pinkish hues, and the chocolate one. They are going to be stopping the chocolate one because people buy less of that. They have less less people asking for the yarn. And I guess also it's because the black sheep or the dark brown sheep that made the chocolate yarn, you need more brown of it and for, uh, to make that colorway. And if they have the natural one, which are predominant, and they make the topi one, they can produce more yarn in different yarn weights for everybody. It's my guess. I haven't been talking with them about that. They just said nobody wants the chocolate. I kind of don't understand that because it's very beautiful. So let me let me first show you the one I got. So these were the last eight skins that I got. No, no other. They don't. They won't be making any other one for now, at least. And this one is, I'm looking for how many ply because I'm not sure it's on there. Maybe it's there and I don't see it. This one is 125 meters per 100 grams. So worsted to, which one is the next one to, uh, above? Bulky maybe. And uh, you need that with needle six to seven millimeters. I will write the US equivalent uh, on the screen. So I have eight balls of this beautiful chocolate colorway. I've already shown it on the here on the on, on video, but uh, um, and I guess the universe told me, as one of you told me, that. Alari, which is one of Alari, which is one of the patterns I want to be making, will be in chocolate. I asked you last time because I went to Lenal West and they did not, they were not happy with the aubergine colorway they had dyed. It's way lighter and it's plain purple. It's not aubergine, it's purple, plain purple and more light than their dark purple that they make usually. So she said sometimes dyeing is not an exact science. And so she's going to be dyeing more, but not before the winter time or next spring. So next year. And I really want to be making Alary. I think the gauge, I can make it work. Short sleeves, I hope that with eight balls, I will have enough. According to the yardage, I'm not quite sure. We'll see, we'll see. And how much did I spend for these eight balls? So I spent 116 euros. Um, I'm making these price a bit of an approximation because I have the total <laughs> that I spent and I did not take the individual prices. So this is about the correct price for the eight boards, according to the other ones and what I recall. So anyway, it's in that range. And this chocolate, Lensoulet Pommier, heavier yarn weight is going to be Alary or Alary. So next I got cones and these cones are not for me, they are for you. So I'm gonna include in my grand total the amount of money I spent because it's yarn and many times when I send out yarn, you have sent me yarn before or you send me yarn after. So in a way, 
if this is not money that I have spent myself, it's in a way in the bulk of all the yarn expenses that I am having with you included. So I got one cone. So this is the top colorway. I'm going to show you the chocolate colorway just next to it. So there is a bit more subtlety to these to these colorways because of the lights here. I close my windows, but I need lights. So anyway, so you see the chocolate and the top colorway. And this one is a, is a lighter weight. It's, I think, I'm not sure I recall if it's the same yarn weight I got the four balls off. But anyway, it's a two ply. It's 250 meters. Yes, I think it's the, I have four balls of that. 250 meters per 100 grams. And this is a five, Yes, I had to look. It's a 500 grams cone. So, so this cone is a new way of spinning by the by the mill. They call it l'Irlandais, the Irish one. It doesn't mean anything because the the other ones. I'm not sure I recall how they called it. This one is a bit more twisted than the one I have. The one I have is a bit more plump. And they like it better because they like the way the knitted pieces look with that type, that type of twist on the yarn. And the yarn is much softer than the one from Lenal West. It's much softer. It's, it's, it's still rustic yarn, you know, still rustic yarn, but it's much softer. So I have the top one and the beige one, which is the natural one, which is even softer. So this is also a 500 cone, also 250 meters per 100 grams. It's also a two ply, l'Irlandais, and I have two cones of this uh, beige colorway, the natural colorway that has a lot of hues. You can see here, it has some gr light gray, gr and it's cooler than, than warmer. You see, light gray and a beigey one. So it's not completely white, but it's much lighter. And with these little gray parts into it, I really, really, really love this colorway. And I'm kind of... <laughs> Wanted to keep one for myself, but I won't, I won't. So these two cones are going to find a new home. I already know who is going to get that. And as I was spending quite a bit of money, they offered me these felted wool so soles. So it's my shoe size. And that you can place into your shoes. And I thought it was a very good idea. I, I had already seen these soles in, on, on, on their booth and I was kind of eyeing them, but I was thinking I've been spending quite a bit of money. So no, next time, maybe next time, they still go, are going still to be making them. Anyway, I will, I will get them at another time. And I think it's gonna be a very good addition to my winter boots. I wear, that's another thing. Are you interested to know which boots I'm wearing during the winter time? I am wearing solo wear shoes. I will link the site down below because I had been wearing Doc Martens for years and years and years. And a pair of Doc Martens would last 10 years for me. I, I would have two that I would wear on and off and a pair of shoes would 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 last over 10 years the last time i bought a doc martins it lasted one year it went into into pieces like crazy and in one year it was totally totally garbage so i kind of was thinking what what's happening so i looked online i did not know I did not know the story. I did not know that Doc Martins had sold the company, had sold the knowledge and all the mapping and everything to 
other co another country, another company, another country. And what happened is that the, the workers from Doc Martens in England, it's an English company in London, kept the machines and started a new company that is called Solover. So I have a, a, a pair of Solover that really look like Doc Martens, except the tag at the back, which is blue. Everything else is the same. They had a lawsuit where they had to change the color of the stitch around the, the, the shoe that is yellow, and this yellow is trademarked by, by Doc Martens, so now it's either black or blue, I think. But anyway, I'm wearing, I've been wearing for almost 10 years now to the Solover shoes, and I think that these soles are going to be just perfect into my winter boots. So the big numbers, now that you know what I've bought. So, so far this year, everything included, I've spent 667 euros and 72 cents. So for the first six months of the year, that's 111 euros and 29 cents per month. It's okay. It's okay. It's no more than the the other last last year. My personal yarn buying is under control. I have one sweater quantity so far and four balls. My pattern buying is also under control. I just bought the Kadri one recently to cast it on, and that's it. And my other accessories and things like that, I bought the Shagu set because I really need, needed it. And I haven't bought things I did not need. So I'm quite happy for now for uh, these expenses. One thing I haven't been able to go and think through is, as I was saying, and I have been saying other, in other videos, why do I have this tendency to accumulate? Why do I fear to miss so much? I have no answer to that, but at least these simple regulations that work for me help me contain all of that. And maybe I will have time later on <laughs> to explore this next step. One other thing I want to be talking about is what I have in my want to buy bundle, because I have been just before, I think I've already said that, just before I turned the camera on, I went through this bundle and I decided which patterns I was going to be removing. I had added five patterns and I just kept three. The three that I kept, and the other ones were two t-shirts. I'm not really sure why I placed them there because they are lace t-shirts and I will be casting on the reduplicate, which is gonna be heavy lace. So I'm not sure why I placed them there. there. Anyway, I took them out. The first pattern that is there and I kept is a little call that is called exact opposite. It's a garter. Got a call with different type of colors, the way you, you manage your colors. And what I like a lot is or are the little notches that are on the call. I, I'm not sure there are two notches on the call. And the way you can wear them. It's really cute. It's exactly what I was looking for. I have a lot of yarn that I can be using with that kind of gutter. I'm not sure how you call that, corrugated garter? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, so it's uh, Shana S. Cohen who made the pattern. She said, modular, reversible, garter sti stitch stripes. Anyway, I like the way it looks. So this one is free. You can, you can get it for yourself. The second one is also free. These are the Elbrus socks by Anna Zura... Vieva, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. 
And what I liked about these socks was the stitch motif. You know I'm knitting socks for my sons and I have a plan to knit socks for myself with the leftovers. I think the stitch motif fits a very simple and beigey colorway, natural colorway. I won't have any simple beigey colorway for now, but I like this stitch motif and I was thinking that's going to be one way to get into more, a, a different type of socks because for now I'm just doing some ribbing so that I'm sure the sock stays snug on the, on the, on the leg and the foot. But I'm kind of very interested into socks that have some lace or stitch motif, so that's one. It's free. And the last one is not a free pattern. And this one I had seen long ago, and for some reason it came up, I guess, into my Instagram feed or something. It's Tane, Tane Top by Anne Wetzel. It was published in March 2022, so that's uh, two years ago. And I guess what I liked, and in the first place, what I liked is the beige one with the black or dark gray and blue colorway, because I have these colors in super soft yarn. I have the blue, I have the dark one. The beigey one can be either the tied or the light gray one. So, and I think this kind of stripes that from far away look like, like stripes would be one way for me to get into stripes because you probably have noticed I don't need stripes and I don't wear stripes. Sometimes I have blue and white striped t-shirts, but that's it. And that would be one way to get into that. And I think I like very much the dark brown, the dark, sorry, dark gray and the blue colorways together on the light beige background. So this one, I... There is another colorway and there are many projects that is more natural taupe and, and brown colorways. How many projects? Uh, 46 projects. So I guess you will have plenty of colorways, different colorways to choose from. I had a look already, but uh, there are many, many, many different options. But I think with the super soft, the slate gray, I have a blue and maybe either the tides or the super soft and the, the light gray would be very nice as a summer knit because I think the super soft yarn would fit my requirements for a summer knit. Now that I'm knitting, I'm knitting it with uh, Yara, uh, knitting the Yara shawl, I think I would enjoy very much a t-shirt in super soft and I was kind of looking for a pattern to be knitting with that and this one came into my feed. I don't know how the Instagram algorithm works. It works <laughs> in a perfect way. You just think of something and it's there. Okay, so I've talked about what I've bought and how much I've spent. I've talked about my patterns. I guess that's going to be it for today. To be honest with you, I had another video idea, but when I realized we were at the end of June, I was thinking I need to do my checking because otherwise it's going to be July and I will forget or it's going to be not timed correctly with the end of the month and everything and my usual schedule and, and the way I place these videos. I had another idea that I guess I'm going to be saving for later on. I hope you would like it and I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy me talking about the way I kind of contain my expenses and when I do spend something, how much I spend and why and everything. It does help me a lot. It keeps me accountable. It keeps me from saying, okay, I've already bought eight balls. Mm, just place them in the cupboard, in a drawer, and buy eight or ten more. It 
keeps me from doing this. And this is what I was doing, to be honest, before that hand. It helps me keep in front of me or in my mind or in my spreadsheet what I have already bought, how much I have already spent, and does it meet what, what I have thought for the year for myself. Because, you know, three sweaters quantities. Will I need three set sweaters this year? Maybe. But if I only buy three sweaters quantity and I need five sweaters, that, me, I mean, that means I have to dig into my own stash. And the only way for me to go to my stash and need the beautiful yarn I have there is not to buy anymore. Because if I buy and I see this new one and I want that, the chocolate one, I want the chocolate one, and next time it's going to be something else and something else and something else. And it's the new and it's the excitement and it's I'm discovering new things and I have this rush, rush of what adrenaline or something of some kind of pleasure, intellectual pleasure. And I'm going to buy and it's going to go out of my sight, I'm going to forget, and then I'm going to buy something else. Next time I, I feel this excitement of discovering something new and new and new and a new pattern and everything. So the perfect example is what happened with the gallant sweater by Kadri and the Tanitop by Anne Wenzel. I'm not sure I recall. Tanitop by Anne Wenzel. It's... The perfect example, I know I want, I'm most probably going to be knitting them. It's there, it's in my bundle. It's not at the bottom of my huge library on Ravelry. It's not at the bottom of the library in, as a whole in Ravelry. It's there, it's waiting for me. I have it before my eyes. It's at my fingertips. And if and when I'm ready to cast on, I can buy it and it's not gone forever because I will forget. And because one month, two months, three months down the line, I will have forgotten which patterns I was interested in and, you know, reduplicate and gallant. And these patterns are perfect example. Rebel, the Rebel Cardigan by Anka Strict. I butchered her name last time. These are perfect examples of patterns I love and that I keep before my eyes and at the top of my mind this way and they stay afloat rather than getting completely buried under the new and the new and the new and the new because there will, there will always be new things, new patterns, new yarn, new ideas. And if you buy the patterns and don't need them, there's just going to be sitting there and making, you know, the pool I smelt. So there you have it. This is my own little way to manage all of that, manage the way I am influenced by social networks, by other people. And being influenced and for good ideas, that's perfect. That's perfect. Being influenced into buying and buying and buying and buying no, I, I, it's too much. It's too much. So if there are ideas for you here, good. Please tell me down below how you manage. Do you buy all the new things? How do you manage with all of that? Because as I said, people say buying yarn and knitting are two different hobbies. But it, I think it's in a way a way to make you feel good with hoarding and, and storing and storing and storing. If you are happy with it, perfect. I was not. So please tell me how you do, how you manage that. Do you buy all the things? Which kind of rules have you set up for yourself? Because we can always have good ideas for each other. And, and how, how do you manage? all these temptations that the social network bring before our eyes. And 
I don't know, maybe separating for social, from social network would be a way, or limiting social network maybe would be a way. I'm kind of thinking about that too, because there is too much temptation, too much temptation. So maybe I should limit myself and not be on Instagram as much as I am. And, you know, I haven't had any time to take pictures and post, but I do read in the bus. And when I have one, five minutes, I, I'm, on, I'm on my phone and maybe I should limit that and maybe have a book with me because it's not easy for me to knit on the bus. So maybe take a book with me. I think it would be a better idea that... I have already been thinking about that and uh, I need to bring small books that I can carry on and are not too heavy. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it did bring you a little bit of joy and happiness into your one hour or so into your day. Because if we don't do it for ourselves, it's not going to come all by, all by itself. And bringing joy and happiness with our knitting, with our craft, have, being happy with the time we spend with our yarn, the patterns, the way we are knitting or fantasizing about future knits, does bring joy and happiness into our daily life. And we do need to work on that because there is no magic recipe and it's not coming all by itself. And I hope you are able to do this and if you can't do it for yourself do it for other people think about other people think about maybe other youtubers or other people from your life or from your internet life and maybe knit one row two rows couple stitches thinking of them in a good way and that will help you bring you joy and happiness and that won't make your life more happy or that won't make all the problems go away but maybe it can change the way you look at them. So, yes, I thank you very much for being here with me. And I hope I will see you next time. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, Talking my knitting life. And if I don't recall today, we are on a Wednesday. It's quite late. If I don't recall today and I recall 500 grams.